This meeting is being recorded. Kurt, we can't hear you, just so you know. Now. I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Try again. Yep. We're good. Okay. We're good. All right. So we're one minute away, guys. Everybody looks nice and fresh. Rich is working out on his treadmill. I love I love the enthusiasm from Rich. <laughs> <clears throat> So it is now eight o'clock central time, nine o'clock Eastern time, some other place, some other time. Welcome everyone to the Questco uh, morning coffee. And this morning is and I uh, thought, what do we really want to talk about? And we want to talk about how you flourish beyond trauma. Uh, this comes from the deep rooted conviction that Questco has that we don't think that people who are refugees or who are dis, uh, disadvantaged are a problem, they are the solution. So we wanna focus on their flourishing. Um, uh, give, sorry? I'm just gonna jump in real quick. I wanna make sure everyone knows to mute, your, mute yourself. I can go in and, and mute for you. If you do have any questions and you wanna ask a question, Feel free to put it in the chat, but um, please know that we might not be able to get to it today, but that's something we can follow up with you on later. And um, raise your hand if you have any questions, but again, please mute yourself just so we know that Kurt and Ezra are able to chat freely and we can listen in. Thank you. Thank you, you're keeping me sorted out. Um, my colleague Isra is really uh, a person who is, in my experience, quite unique. She comes to us uh, highly uh, trained in her field, highly credentialed, amazing experience, and a very unique heart. Um, so we are very pleased to have her. Of course, being a mother of a boy is really a, an addition too. If you've all seen the t-shirt that says, mother of boys, less drama, harder to keep alive, okay? So Isra is used to the idea of keeping people alive. Um, I will pr frame this just a tiny bit and then I'll let Isra tell you about um, the experiences and the philosophy of Questscope, particularly with refugees, but not limited to. We really seek in Questscope to build on strengths and not to focus on problems. We believe in the preeminent importance of relationships that strengthen us between peers and from adults to youth and in youth to adults. We really think that bridging the gaps for young, for people who've been, in, been traumatized involves the arts, music, storytelling, drama, uh, because we are not mono uh, framed people, we are multifaceted people. And that what we really wanna know is how do you experience life? If we can understand that, then we can join you in your journey. 
So with those introductory remarks, I'll uh, turn this over to Iswat to tell us a little bit about how she has approached the issues of mental well-being, how she has uh, produced the um, impressions that we would like to generate in the lives of disadvantaged youth. That's right. Thank you, Dr. Kerr. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, hi, everyone. Nice meeting you all. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, our vision in Questoscope and how we see mental health. Because um, I used to work with another NGO um, providing specialized mental health services. Uh, but I deliberately came to Questoscope because I was fascinated by the way they see uh, mental health, um, the way they perceive people as a human being, regardless of the experiences. So it was there is an echo. I don't know. Is it from my end? Sorry, is my voice clear? Now it is. I had to mute Kurt, but you're good. <laughs> okay. So um, we at Questscope, we have um, a, a fascinating view of just, we, we see children, we see people, as human beings, regardless of their experiences, we don't focus on illnesses or psychopathology. We try to uh, emphasize on strengths and build on strengths, use those strengths to um, build resilience and to establish um, a supporting community that welcomes everyone and um, promote uh, flourishing and healing and acceptance, of course. Um, we know that uh, trauma, um, it's, it's a little bit hard to, to, to come up with a unified um, definition of trauma because it's a very personalized thing. Everyone experiences life in a different way. Everyone has different strengths, different abilities, different background, different genetics, which can affect our responses to situations, stressful situations specifically. And it could contribute to um, uh, the response of trauma. And um, there's a lot of, um, let's say, um, effects that can result of um, experiencing trauma, uh, which includes um, avoidance, dissociation sometimes, um, flashbacks, I mean, all those kind of experiences and symptoms can vary and differ from person to person. Uh, but we at Questoscope, we recognize the importance of recognizing those kind of symptoms and spotting them and responding them in a timely manner and in, in the right way in a safe, supporting environment. And also, we realize at Questoscope that it's very important, uh, even if, if we are not providing any um, certain uh, mental health specialized services, but we try to incorporate trauma principles. We, we have uh, trauma-informed uh, interventions in all our programs. Our facilitators, our um, uh, staff, they all have the basic knowledge of trauma responses, how to, to um, facilitate um, the services and provide services in a safe uh, environment, how to um, interact, in the right way with uh, people who are um, who might be subjected to trauma, because we know that uh, a lot of children or youth or uh, beneficiaries that we um, see daily might have uh, hidden traumas they don't they, we don't know about. Even sometimes they don't know um, the the specifics of their traumas or responses, and, and they don't address it as traumas. They come up as depression and anxiety. And we realize that um, those emo emotional dysregulations or, or symptoms or um, um, consequences have long-term effects on uh, children. Specifically, also, it, it could have um, a profound um, effect on their brain development, on their character development, their view of life, how they, they approach opportunities, how they seek um, support, how, how they seek help, 
all those kind of uh, things can be profoundly affected by trauma, especially if it's very, um, you know, it's big traumas or, or complicated recurrent traumas they, they, they have been through. Also, we recognize the importance of establishing and building um, a supportive, compassionate community, because for us, it's very important um, for healing and for um, all kinds of services when we want to provide non-formal education, for instance, we, when we want to uh, provide social emotional learning or whatever kind of service we are providing, we always try to build on the importance of relationships, group dynamics, to utilize this kind of forces to support uh, the healing journey um, of the beneficiaries we serve. Also, we you know, um, kind of emphasize the, important, uh, the importance of enhancing chances of post-traumatic growth, because it's very important to let people say, see, uh, see that um, growth is still uh, you know, an option for them. Because we know sometimes trauma can make people lose hope, lose a uh, sense of agency, um, and sometimes they feel um, you know, uh, not comfortable enough to express themselves freely or uh, they don't have um, uh, self um, good self-worth. Uh, they don't have, um, you know, they don't believe in their self-efficacy. Um, whatever they do, sometimes they think that it will never change things around them. It will never change the traumatic events. So they have a learned helplessness going on. So we have um, tried to, to overcome all those obstacles and, and to instill hope in them and to give um, uh, a bright light um, of, of hope and uh, positive view uh, of life. So um, we also try to um, always be available for those children and young uh, adults to support them in their journeys through our mentorship programs, through our uh, continuous support and engagement with our um, qualified facilitators. Uh, also, um, we also recognize the importance of self-compassion. That's why we as staff and facilitators uh, we try to to provide compassion for people to to you know, to to reteach some of the children how to be compassionate toward themselves and how, and how to be compassionate towards others because uh, trauma sometimes can can cause some kind of cognitive distortions of um, where people don't see that help can come or uh, people can 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 provide any support they lose faith in their communities they lose uh, their sense of connectedness and belongingness to, to to their communities so we try to reestablish that by building a very um supportive safe we we emphasize a lot on safety of the environment um we try to um give them um, agency and to emphasize that they have um, valuable contributions um, to, to all phases of our programs. Um, some of um, uh, representatives from the community, sometimes they, they participate in our PRA sessions where they can contribute to um, programs uh, design, programs um, um, ideations. The services comes from them, from their needs, from their requirements. So they have a sense of agency and they feel that they can contribute to things um, are being served to them. Uh, also, uh, we um, we try always to uh, emphasize, um, especially for children, I'm talking here um, for children, uh, the importance of um, using um, expressive tools because because you know, we we want to avoid um, going through specialized therapy that might um, yeah you know, be a little bit complicated, but we try to provide tools that help can help those children and young adults to grow and heal and to express themselves, to uh, emphasize the importance of 
um, having those tools to as a way of um, looking to, to to their traumas from a different angle. Um, those tools can help them also to, um, let's say, um, process their emotion, help them re regulate their emotions, understand their emotions a little bit, to have a distance from their um, emotions that they are afraid of, of talking about. So when they use art therapy or music, um, any, um, or singing or um, photography, they are um, provided with tools that can help them tell their story in, in a direct way. Uh, it's, it's not a direct way that could harm them. They can still feel safe. They can still feel able to um, share or not to share their experiences. They are, um, they, they feel that um, maybe they can objectify a little bit of those emotions to, ha to have them distant from them so they can process those kind of hard emotions very slowly and very um, safely. So um, all those elements we incorporate in our, um, with all services we provide. Um, and also um, we are trying to um, provide continuous support for those children and youth. Our center is open and we have, um, we have established a community in our center in Zathary specifically that can foster any uh, community, um, let's say, uh, uh, what what else? Any <laughs> mubadarat? I I lost the word. <laughs> Dr. Um, initiatives. Initiatives. Thank you. <laughs> community initiatives. <laughs> Yeah, and if you, um, they, they can also um, come up with their ideas, they have a free space to, to suggest activities, to play um, football, and uh, we use sport as well, because we, we at Quest Scope recognize the importance of physical activity and um, uh, somatic interventions in, in trauma. So we provide them with all those tools and other tools that we, we don't have the space to talk about today, because we have a lot of things that can help those children and young adults to grow and heal and overcome those struggles of their daily livings. And also, um, I want to emphasize that it's not only traumas. I mean, children, specifically in Zachary, they are going through hardships in, in, in every, I mean, every day they go, go through uh, those kind of hardships. The fact that they are living in, in, in a camp I mean, I once met a child who was born in Zatiri and he was wondering what a two building house looked like. So there is a lot of struggles that, that they need to cope in daily basis. So um, those kind of tools we, we as Questoscope try to support them with, there are tools that came up, came from them, suggested by them. Uh, the community itself supports each other. Uh, our facilitators in Quest Scope, uh, especially in Zatari, are refugees themselves. So they are um, taking um, the, the, their own point of view and incorporate it in all um, project or programs design uh, steps and implementation. So, um, when I was working with another NGO, I was providing specialized therapy and stuff like that. But to be honest, I was always fascinated with the improvement I see when, when I refer people to Quest Scope to be engaged with their activities. The amount of hope and light in their eyes, the, the enthusiasm, they they feel like they are going to their home, not, not to, to a space that provide uh, certain services or, or um, certain um, help, but they, they feel like they belong there. And that's why I decided I want to come to Quest Scope. Um, so I, I, I've done it deliberately, <laughs> Dr. Kert. Um, I, yeah, I mean, it, it was one of the right. best decisions of my life, to be honest. 
Ms. Rock, can I ask you a question? Yes, sure. I'm, I'm sure that we have a thousand and one questions in this group, okay? So I'll ask the first one and then the rest can do the thousand. When you mentioned that we seek to enhance the chances of post-traumatic growth. Yeah. Can you tell us, tell us uh, an example how we approach that? Because yeah. the, the, the whole idea of professional services is that you have this time, I finish with you and I move on. And then what does a person do? So how do we exactly. enhance the chances for post-trauma growth? Yes, and I mean, anyone else can send a, a question into the chat now, also, it will deal with. Yeah, one of the most um, influential uh, factors in post traumatic growth is the social support to have a community that accepts you, accepts your experiences, understand what you have been through, even if, if, if they don't have. Um, if they don't go through the same uh, circumstances, but still they can uh, provide you with a free supporting space to express yourself without any fear of judgment or any fear of external control, um, which, which as a traumatized person, you, 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 any, someone who have been through, sorry, trauma might have a problem with, with, with things forced on them, services, forced on them in a certain way. So in our scope, we um, emphasize the importance of the contribution of all people going through our programs. And there is um, uh, ongoing community uh, support in, in our um, centers. So um, we have regular uh, community meetings. Uh, in our center, there is uh, gatherings for the community, um, we, we provide this kind of support. Also, we provide mentorship programs where we provide uh, mentors who can follow up with graduates from our programs on the long term. And they provide support, continuous support and guidance uh, regarding certain areas or um, sometimes referrals if they need certain services. We provide, we, we, we treat um, all our uh, beneficiaries as um, a family, like we, we try to continually support them to support themselves, to empower them to, to take charge of their lives. But also we don't give up on them after finishing uh, a certain program or a, a certain service. No, they, they now belong to a community from their own um, um, any um, local community that can support them. And also we uh, provide them to re with referrals to certain other services provided by our, by our side or by other NGOs. Uh, we have a non-formal education program, educational opportunities, vocational opportunities. And uh, as I said, um, mentorship is a very uh, um, important component to us. We look at um, the uh, importance relationship effect and we will use our relationship as a therapy tool to enhance to enhance uh, growth and um, overcoming certain uh, any obstacles can i can i ask you another question yes sure um or to elucidate yeah. something you made an earlier comment that a number of people who have gone through trauma uh, and the experience of coming out of trauma with Questscope are now contributing to our programs. Yes. So this, yes. this is part of the result of this philosophy that people are not problems, people are the solution. And the stronger yeah, you involve, quote, graduates of your programs, the stronger the programs become. Because now people that you affected are actually able to tell you, number one, what you did right, Number two, what you can improve on, and then they help lead us. Can you give us an example of a person that we have been able to bring into the uh, programmatic leadership of our work in trauma? Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe Mike, you can tell us more about that. But yeah, I mean, um, it's not only one person, actually. There's a lot of uh, our facilitator 
especially um, previously when we applied the perfect psychology program, those facilitators are from the Syrian refugee in Zaatari camp. They came up with the idea of the program with Mike and they together contributed to the to the design and um, implementation of the uh, program so uh, and they continuously continuously um uh, provide the uh, feedback on how to improve the services and they still some of them they're still working with us uh, on, on different uh, in different programs and all of our um facilitators they are very uh, qualified and they contribute they give big contribution uh, to um, the, our programs, either in Zatari or even um, in Amman. Um, uh, another uh, one of the person who was uh, who was the meal, um, uh, who was in charge of the monitoring and evaluation in Zatari, he provided support to us in Amman uh, yesterday regarding something. So we always have that kind of open communication. Uh, where um, all the ideas um, not not come does not come from uh, quest scope to the beneficiaries. It comes from the community and the uh, um, facilitators and and people we work with through our um, um, group sessions, focus group uh, discussions, uh, BRA tools, and that on that basis we design programs. This is, uh, would anyone like to raise their hand to uh, actually ask your own question online or make a comment? Sorry. Rich does, I see Rich's hand up. Rich. All right, Rich, please unmute yourself and talk to us. So I'm very interested in neuroeducation and leveraging the power of the arts to rewire a, a brain and trauma. Uh, I'm interested in everything from the molecular to the cellular, to the structural, to the bodily, to the environmental basis. So everything that you're saying really resonates with me. If we pick up on exercise, um, as you see, I've been walking on my treadmill ever since my heart attack. I've done 10 miles a day or more, and I don't type unless I'm walking. I just know I need more oxygen to my brain. And yet in most schools, we're sitting most of the day. So I, I'm wondering, um, are, there, are there specific ways that we could help look at the neurology of rewiring the brain? And... Um, partner with you in, in doing that. I know Kurt's coming over later today and you're bringing a friend, Kurt. And uh, I'd love to talk about. Um, yeah, that, let's, let's step back from education for just a minute okay. and realize that children experience education as trauma. <laughs> Sit down, be quiet, smack, you know. Um, you've got to compete. Your grade is too low. Your homework is not because kids experience education as trauma. What do you do in the hallways? Are people nice to you? Are they kind to you? I mean, I was in uh, middle school and high school. Nobody's kind to you. Okay. So if a young person experiences education as trauma, number one, if you're always on the lookout for danger, part of your brain shuts down because your alert signals are up high, all right? So, so I'm gonna let you talk in just a minute about some of the things that you have seen with young people and how we've dealt with them. But uh, in or out of school, wherever it is, a young person feels, experiences the world very much in terms of, this is a traumatic situation. You don't have to be bombed to have trauma. Bombing yeah. helps you have trauma. <laughs> Um, so I, I'm, I'm really with you, uh, Rich, that we have to recognize that let's do some different things, whether it's dancing, singing, uh, telling stories, as Estrat mentioned, drawing, uh, having people just interested in your drawing lights up parts of your brain. 
So, if we could, Ms. Rock, could you describe a situation where we've actually uh, done some of the things that Rich has uh, greatly experienced, great experience in, in recognizing that life is a trauma and that we can make it a lot easier for young people to not be in this trauma? Yeah, I agree with you, um, Rich and Dr. Dr. Kurt. Um, the, the problem with um, traumatic uh, experiences are that they are very personal and individualized. And um, mostly trauma is the trauma response, the perceived event, how, how people perceive events and how they process those events and how they respond to those events. And those events can vary. It could be bombing or it could be uh, a small argument at the classroom. So uh, it depends on the, the reaction depends on a lot of factors, a lot of risk uh, factors and um, um, the, the how, how much um, the brain is developed, how um, young or old is, is the person, um, the kind of supportive environment or the existence of it or not, um, the uh, genetics. It's all, all those kind of factors that sometimes it's hard to control all, all those factors, but what we can control a little bit or um, help with is the response, the perception of the traumatic event, the process of the tra traumatic um, memories or, or uh, experience, and also the, the response. The response could be um, not only on, um, it does not happen only in the brain. It's it's physical. Um, you talked about the um, psychoeducation uh, and the uh, neurology and the importance of understanding our um, uh, traumatic experiences from that perspective. How we re we react to stress. Um, Bolivagal nerve theory talks a lot about different kind of responses. Uh, the physical responses we give that is usually neglected in the therapy. We, we usually as therapists, we rely a lot on talk therapies and uh, CPT or uh, other stuff that we use to talk to the brain. But a lot of ther uh, therapists neglect that there is a strong somatic experiences come to people who, who experience trauma. And um, uh, there is Dr. Peter Levine who, who talks a lot about um, uh, how, how the body keeps score of trauma. So I, I agree with you, psychoeducation on the uh, neurology and how the brain responds to trauma is very important. And also um, understanding the trauma from a holistic perspective that engages uh, not only the brain, but also the body and the emotions and the spirituality of the person, to look at the person as a whole, not only as a traumatized case. Uh, and- Excellent, um, excellent. It's right. It's right. we have another question about community, okay? Bringing yeah. people into community, because we believe that's a very strong facet of healing. I know in our work with um, abused and neglected street youth, Probably 95% of the youth did not need specialized care. They needed a community of people who loved them, support them, had their back, and then they, they felt safe to grow. Only about 5% yeah. needed the kind of professional help that they should have, okay? Would you talk with us about how you build the trust that allows community to form? Yes. Uh, at the beginning, I want to say thank God for the neuroplasticity because it's um, it's very important to realize that uh, our brains can develop and continue to heal itself if we provide a safe, supportive environment, if we provide people with kind, the right kind of resources. So uh, at Custoscope, we emphasize the important uh, the importance of um, building supportive communities where it, it the safety is number one priority uh, openness um, non-judgmental um, it's right I, I have to interrupt you 
I know you very well. When you talk about safety, you do not mean that they're safe from physical harm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Tell, tell us, give us an example. Sorry. Give us an example of how you how you create emotional safety. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, there's a lot of elements that contribute to emotional safety. At the beginning, we, we have uh, to make children very comfortable and accepted by just simple techniques, simple um, way of communication, uh, clear, uh, genuine, um, trusting uh, interaction where people feel safe and accepted uh, and um, they feel that they are with a trusted person because, because this person does not force um, the, the intervention to them. They just give them the agency and the, the willingness to express themselves freely. And we use um, a, a lot of tools like expressive arts and, and stuff like that to, to make um, children feel that we, we are not here to force you to talk about your experiences or we are not here to go through uh, very painful, um, disturbing emotions. We are here just because we want to be here with you. To 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 experience I, life. I really appreciate. I, I really appreciate that, and something even earlier that you said about brain development. And yeah. we know from our work with young women that we're talking about 14, 15 year old girls in Aqaba. That yeah. the yeah. the what the young women who are um, protected from early marriage. Uh, are now they're 16 years old and they are 16 years old in their minds. There were other young women two years ago that we could not protect from early marriage. They are not 16 years old in their minds now. They're much older. And, yeah. and so we, their emotional demands were greater than the brain development stage of a 14 year old girl. Can you talk with us about the importance of recognition of how you help a person's brain develop, how you help them get acclimate their neurons to the world, so to speak, when things have happened that should not have happened to them, way yes. beyond yes. their emotional maturity. Yeah, yeah. when uh, children, uh, young children experience uh, complicated trauma or um, a a certain traumatic event or or even mild stressors but for a long time a long period of time the their brain just stops in the survival mode they their their amygdala is very hyperactive and we know that from science when the amygdala is hyperactive the frontal lobe the decision making um area of our brain the executive function areas of the brain are less active. And that kind of, of hyperactivity of the amygdala can um, destruct the brain in a very harmful way. It can uh, interfere with the, with the uh, child ability to learn or grow or um, acquire new experience or acquire, sorry, um, a new skill. It interrupts memory because um, they might have some flashbacks or some kind of unprocessed memories that keep coming in and interrupt their their um, learning memory. Um, they can new um, or learn new things or um, enjoy ex new experiences. And um, I talked previously about one of um, uh, the the symptoms of trauma, which is um, avoidance. So they avoid. Uh, certain experiences, including learning. And we know the lack of learning um, could affect the brain negatively. And uh, as there is neuroplasticity, it, 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 neuroplasticity you know, works both ways. It, it works in a good way to help us develop our, our, our brain, 
And if we learn new things or experience new experiences, the, those kind of neural networks strengthen. But if we don't uh, use those kind of neural networks and we kept ourselves um, uh, focused on the um, surviving uh, you know, uh, certain events or, or stressors, the, the brain just strengthen our um, emotional uh, responses that it's not always the optimal responses. So we tend, um, if we are traumatized, we tend to react in more emotionally than um, using our analytical abilities. And uh, a lot of mistakes can come from that. Anger issues, um, anger I know, a, lot of, a lot of mistakes. A lot of <laughs> mistakes have come from that in my life. So I understand what you're saying. <laughs> We're, we're about five minutes out, uh, team and friends. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to raise their hand and make a comment or complain about the coffee in case the coffee wasn't so good? You know, I couldn't control the coffee. Sorry. <laughs> Part of the, I'll just chat for a second here. Part of the understanding of Questscope to develop the spiritual abilities of young people relates to something that uh, Isra said earlier, that you actually get people to understand their response to the traumatic event. And in a sense, you get them to retranslate it into something that they can build on. Um, yeah. We have to have a seminar sometime on how we stimulate spiritual formation. Um, there's Jessica's just popped in here with a question. Yes. Uh, how about your the change in your life is thought that you know you've been you've been affected you've been in fact affected with this Quesco virus. What is this going to do to you for the future? <laughs> Yeah, um, to be honest, any with the scope environment, it is like a virus. <laughs> it's contagious. I'm telling everyone I know to come to with the scope. <laughs> you know, um, previously, all my work experience was with psychopathology, illnesses, disorders, uh, depression, post traumatic stress disorder, um, schizophrenia. I, I worked a lot in, in clinics and therapy, clinical uh, psycho as a clinical psychologist or as a counselor, but you know, Gustascope has shifted my mind towards a more productive, brightful um, view of things because I developed a fascination in uh, positive psychology um, and uh, I took a, specializa a new specialization in uh, positive psychology, the Berma model for Martin Seligman, which focuses a lot on growth um so now I'm, I'm i'm i've shifted my view of just looking for the disorder the symptoms the what is going wrong to see at first to look first for what's going right and build on it and use the strengths of people to overcome whatever they are going through and this is for me has changed me personally to be honest I think this is one of the most amazing things I've heard in a long time. Because as, as professionals and people in any line of work, any profession, most of us have to make our way in life by focusing on what went wrong so we can fix it. But to hear you say that actually the real emphasis is to focus on what is right. So that not only creates a, a better environment for everyone, but it also increases your joy in life. And maybe we could say increasing joy in life is one of the primary outcomes that we seek in working with young people in trauma. I really appreciate the time that Let's everyone has you. given us this morning. Yeah, we Karen, just I, got I, a Sorry? I was just gonna say, Go it's also very, 
hopeful and very nice to go to our um, centers. I, I was in Zatari camp um, two days ago, and the vibes, the, the amount of um, joy and, and, and hope you can get from refugees, it's very, very therapeutic. Even, you know, even for me as a therapist, I felt like I need to, to go more often. <laughs> I, I feel the very same way. Every time I go, I love to go to Zatri, and every time I go, I feel energy. And because people in crisis are also people, then they really nourish me. You know, which I think is another important thing, that people in trauma can also help us overcome our own trauma. So again, thank you everyone who joined us this morning. Uh, it looks like we need to have another session sometime with coffee. It's really strong coffee about, about spiritual formation. Uh, I look forward to that opportunity and any other opportunities that someone might suggest that you heard um, the exquisite presentation by Israat Samadhi and had a chance to look a little bit into her heart and mind. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. We will see you again around a coffee pot sometime very soon. <laughs> Thank you and goodbye.